In 2009, Navy clearance diver Paul de Gelder lost his arm and leg in a bull shark attack in Sydney Harbour. His zest for life and determination to succeed, despite his horrific injuries, inspired you all. He was seemingly impervious. But Paul's been harbouring a secret. He still has one score to settle to go face to face with his nemesis, the bull shark. You'd excuse Paul de Gelder for bailing out on this mission. Everybody ready? Where in the ocean waters off Fiji to dive with bull sharks. I need to continually move forwards, so I just have to find ways to do that. It's that awe-inspiring fear, I guess. And I like to conquer my fears. I don't like to be afraid of things. But there's a lot to be afraid of. This is the very species that ripped off Paul's right hand and leg and nearly took his life. The same animal that Paul plans to confront in the wild. You can't compare it to anything on the planet coming face to face with a, a minibus full of teeth. That's an uncontrollable situation. Sometimes you just gotta close your eyes and jump. Paul de Gelder, to put it bluntly, is tough as nails. Today, on the outskirts of Sydney, he's tackling the Spartan race. A gruelling test of mind and body. And the trademark de Gelder determination is on full display. Part of the reason is to prove to everyone that no matter the hurdles, you can achieve things. That's part of it. But it's to prove to myself that I can still live a good life and I can still be happy with myself. Paul, do you have a fear of failure? Yeah, I have a huge fear of failure but maybe not the, the usual fear of failure. I, I, I fear failing myself. How do you do? Yeah, very well, yourself? From the moment I met Paul four years ago, he was determined to succeed on his road to recovery. The nurses uh, freak out a little bit. They see me hopping around and, oh, my God, what are you doing? Even in those first few weeks as he confronted the horrific injuries to his body, Paul's mind was characteristically strong. You can see the teeth marks oh, in the leg. My goodness. Oh, Paul. They've amputated just above the knee there. They've cut it underneath, removed the knee, and just folded it all down. So now my hamstring's my calf. Calf's my hamstring. Paul's life changed in the dawn light of February 11, 2009. I just dived into the water in my black wetsuit and a pair of fins. This elite clearance diver was on an anti-terrorism exercise in Sydney Harbour, not some remote location, but just a few hundred metres from the steps of the Sydney Opera House. I just felt a, a huge whack in the leg. And then I looked down and just straight into the eyes of this massive shark's head. So I tried to jab it in the eyeball with my right hand, but I couldn't move it. And I looked down and I just saw this row of teeth all the way from the top of my knee, all across my thigh, all across my wrist. The lips were pulled back. This is that moment, Paul fighting for his survival. And the shock just continued to shake me like a rag doll, just tearing the, the meat out of my leg and tearing my hand off my arm. And then all of a sudden, I was free. It was the longest swim of my life. I didn't think I was going to make it out. I didn't think the guys were going to get to me in time. I thought another shark was going to come and grab me, or that the same shark was going to all of a sudden grab me by the ankle, and I was just mentally prepared for that to happen. But it never came. The guys got to me in the boat and pulled me in, and out of sheer relief, I just passed out. The first thing I noticed was his hand was gone and it absolutely just shocked me because 
I'm thinking, what's going to happen to him? How's he going to survive the rest of his life? Your mother instinct kicks in. Have you ever been out this way before? I've been a few places on For any parent, it's a heart-wrenching scenario. For Paul's mum, Pat, the day of the attack remains as vivid for her as it does for him. I didn't think I was ever going to cope with you. I wish that the shark had killed me. Over that day, I just wanted to be dead, so I didn't feel that pain anymore. It was so horrific. As a mother, could you understand his feelings? Absolutely. You know, sometimes I can put myself in the place and think back to that day when it happened, and it's horrible. And the only way to cope with it is to put it aside and go forward, and that's what Paul does. Put it aside and go forward. Paul just doesn't go forward. He charges on like a force of nature. Sorry, push it up. That's outstanding, mate. So did you know that I know <laughs> eight body people that can't do this activity? You're up next, Pete. <laughs> That's it. His daily gym session is impressive, if not, well, intimidating. Oh, 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 oh. I was using two arms. That is extraordinary. <laughs> 40 kilos, and that is... You're lifting that above your head. I can't lift that above it. It's a waist. Test. Paul's now in the Navy Reserve, a best-selling author and a sought-after motivational speaker. Do you want to go all the way up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he has star yeah. power such that a stroll along the Sydney Harbour foreshore turns into an invitation from the local firefighters for a bird's eye view. Do you, do you look at the harbour and think, I wonder how many bull sharks are, are swimming around here today? All the time, all the time. I wonder if the bugger that got you's out there. Yeah, I'm hoping he choked, actually. <laughs> choked on a big hamstring. <laughs> the bull shark is number one. It is absolutely unquestioned the number one most dangerous shark on this planet. You must be Tony. Paul! Marine biologist Tony Isaacson has spent most of his diving life fearing sharks. But bizarrely, Paul's experience made him reassess that fear. How are you feeling this morning? A little nervous and hesitant. And it was Tony's brainchild that Paul should come here to Fiji to dive with wild bull sharks. When I experienced Paul's story, it, uh, it put a fire in my belly because here was a guy who had experienced my worst nightmare. And I thought, he's going for it. And I never doubted for a moment that this was going to happen. When Tony contacted you with his extraordinary enthusiasm for you to dive with bull sharks, what was your initial reaction? I thought he was full of crap, actually. <laughs> but uh, he was so passionate about it, and he made me passionate about it. The bull sharks we're looking for are lurking in the clear, open waters five kilometres offshore to the shark-infested Benkha Reef. And today, four years after losing a hand and a leg to a bull shark, Paul is heading out to confront his nemesis. Well, Welcome to the bistro. <laughs> Where I'm the main course. <laughs> As we settle on the dive spot, the mood turns more serious. But Paul doesn't turn away from his mission. In the moment, right now, are the butterflies starting to churn a little bit? You are going to face the beast that took your arm and your leg. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know if there's going to be any bull sharks down there on this one dive. Uh, I'm kind of hoping there is and kind of hoping there isn't. Why can't you just say, you know what, I've had one shot at the sharks and they got me, why go and put myself in front of them again? I'm a firm believer in facing your fears, uh, overcoming adversity and obstacles and anything that's going to stop you from developing as a person. That sounds fantastic, don't get me wrong. But I still don't understand the need to go and stare at a bull shark again. And that'd be why you're not in the wetsuit. <laughs> yes, very much so. While Paul prepares on deck, 20 metres below, support divers chum the area with blood and fish guts to attract the sharks. And then, once in the water, Paul is a man unswerving in his determination. 
He just went to the bottom of the ocean like a stone. And there I am, his buddy, you know, frantically chasing after him. And uh, when we were on the bottom, you could see he was right in the moment. He was in the moment. I was just there for the ride. Surface to Paul, Peter here. What's it like down there, mate? This is incredible. I honestly cannot believe I'm doing this. Paul may be out of my sight, down in the depths, but he's not out of touch. There's sharks everywhere, and I've had this bloody water with them. First, the gummy, tawny nurse sharks come in, known as Labradors of the sea, because they're so placid. Then, finally, the bull sharks arrive. Oh, jeez. A big bull shark again. And to entice them even closer, amazingly, the support divers feed them by hand. Even more incredibly, so does Paul. <laughs> How was <Wow>. it? <laughs> That was incredible. I've never seen anything like it. It was absolutely amazing. They were in a, a feeding frenzy, just writhing around on top of each other, and you're right there. You're amazing, <laughs> mate. <laughs> my biggest problem was my leg kept falling off. <laughs> yeah, so everybody ready? Ready. OK, let's go. I've always known Paul is inspiring. Good, buddy. Yep. Yeah, it shouldn't be too oh, good. tight. But when you're out here, in his presence, suddenly anything seems possible. I promised my wife I wouldn't dive with the bull sharks. I'm going to be honest the birds have kicked you. Pete, what are you thinking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but for all my nerves, all my reservations, I couldn't resist. Down here, time slows, and instead of fear, there is a serenity amid the absolute chaos of a feeding frenzy. After all this time, what seemed like such a crazy idea for Paul, and for me for that matter, was an extraordinary experience. Paul's desire to do this suddenly all made sense. And I wanted to witness them in, in a, an environment where they're not threatening, where they can be a, a beautiful part of the, the environment and the ocean and not a vicious, hamstring, hand-tearing man-eater. Maybe they spread the word around that uh, you don't taste that good. I'm sure I don't taste that good. <laughs> <laughs> Something I'll never forget for the rest of my life just like the shark attack, making my peace with it. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.